Okay, so in this video we're going to introduce something called a postulate, which um, is also sometimes referred to as an axiom. We're going to use the word postulate. And so I'm going to give you four postulates um, to kind of start uh, our discussion about geometry. And so really we're talking about like, well, what is a postulate? Um, before we start getting into me actually giving it to me. So you can think of postulates as very basic rules. <clears throat> if we're going to start talking about geometry, we need to have some very basic concepts that we can build on. So we can start like putting together postulates um, and using some logic and then coming up with more um, interesting ideas. But before we do that, we need the building blocks. We need those basic facts that are true that we're allowed to use when we um, discuss geometry. Okay, So here's your first postulate, um, and you'll see what I mean by saying these things are pretty um, self-explanatory. They're not things that we need to go into a lot of detail to prove to somebody. Um, that's why we call them the building blocks. Okay, So postulate 1-1, one, one, we're saying through any two points there is exactly one line. Right? And so what that means is you could pick any two points you want on a board or anywhere out in space. So for example, I'm just randomly with my pen, gonna like not really try anything. I'm just gonna put a dot there, All right? And I'm randomly gonna come over here. And I'm gonna put another dot, um, and I'm claiming that I can grab my line tool. Which let me grab the precise line tool, okay? And I can draw a line, and I can definitely hit both of these points. So if you notice, like I'm hitting the one on the left. This one's it's snapping on my computer a little bit, but you can see like I could get in that space there. My my computer's being too nice to me and making it horizontal, but you get the idea, okay? I can move this point wherever I wanted to. So let's say down here somewhere, and I could move this line, hopefully, to make sure that it goes through that one, and I'm going to move it up a little bit, and there you go, I'm hitting both points. So it doesn't matter, wherever you draw two points, um, you can put a line through those two points. Okay. Second postulate. Um, if you draw two lines, okay, and they intersect each other, they will inter intersect each other at exactly one point. So we want a, a precise definition of what intersect means because we can intersect more than lines. An intersection is the set of all points that um, two figures have in common. So in this case, we're claiming that these two lines, the set of points is only going to be one point, right? There's not more than one spot where they intersect. It's exactly one location, and that is C. Okay? So again, pretty straightforward idea. We're not blowing anybody's mind with these ideas. Okay? If we're intersecting planes, however, there's actually a lot of points where they cross each other. So again, if I'm looking at my picture here, I kind of took two pieces of paper and I, I sliced one of them so I could fit the other one right through it and they're crossing each other. And you can pick any point on this space here okay, and say all of these points are on this yellow plane and all of these points are also on the one that's kind of going up and down the kind of uh, gray looking plane and so we would say that they are on the intersection because they are in both uh, planes at the same time that's what intersections are it's the set of all points that are in both figures at the same time and so just as a kind of a side note when we're drawing we obviously can't draw infinity but technically this plane extends much further over here right and this way as well right so I can my great drawing skills okay and these ones also extend um, you know forever in every direction so even though we're only showing this little tiny space here it technically the plane extends much further this way and so do the, the intersection lines. So there's actually an infinite number of points because these planes travel forever um, in their respective directions. So just something to consider that our picture um, doesn't represent the full picture. It's just obviously we can't draw an infinitely large plane and have it extend forever. So the, the line does actually keep going. We just don't indicate that. Okay, and Especially with planes, that's not obvious because we don't have arrows on planes. So let's take a look at a picture and see if we can find some intersections. So I'm giving you a picture here that looks like a box. It might be a cube or it might be rectangles. We're not sure. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to name intersection. So it says, what is the intersection of plane ADC and plane BFG? So if you remember in the last video, we talked about um, looking at a three-dimensional object when it's on a flat surface like a screen. We use dotted lines to represent things that are kind of like in the back things that we would not be able to see if this was solid um, and that's what's going on here so we can take a look at this picture and know that the lines EH and DH and HG are kind of the ones that are in the back corner 
of this uh, box. So when we talk about ADC, let me grab my highlighter tool because we're really talking about this one right here. ADC is, I'm going to trace lines, A to D and D to C. They are in the plane that I would describe as the top of the box. So I'm going to highlight that. Okay, And I'm going to do the same thing. It says BFG. So B to F and F to G, right? those are on there. And that looks like the right-hand side of the box. So I'm going to highlight that. And so they're asking, well, what's the intersection of these two? And we can take a look at this line right here, okay? that is the edge that they share. It's the top edge of the purple side of the box. And it's the right-hand edge, or edge of the yellow part of the box. So I would say BC, which I'm going to use line BC. Make sure you use the right letters. Uh, that are on that line and make sure you use the proper symbol above it so that people know that this is a line. Um, it might also be uh, appropriate or it wouldn't be wrong to put line segment BC. So either of these would be an okay way of writing that. But we're going to go with the more precise definition. The definition said it is a line. So we're going to go with that. Okay. What is the intersection of AD and AE? And so if you go back to this postulate we said when we're talking about intersections of lines, lines intersect at a point. Right? When we're talking about planes, planes intersect at a line. Right, So that's why when I wrote this first one and it said planes are intersecting, my answer was a line. Now they're saying, what is the intersection of AD and AE? So again, let me grab my highlighter. Let's get rid of all this other stuff from the previous problem. Okay, And I'm going to just highlight the, the lines that they asked about. So they said line AD. So that's this one right here. Okay, And line AE. And so it looks like, again, there's a point right here, point A, okay, that represents the intersection of those two lines. So lines intersect at a point, good. Okay. So we're going to skip that example and we're going to move on to postulate 1-4. This is our last one. And what it says is through any three uh, non-collinear points, there is exactly one plane. So this is kind of similar to the first one we started off with that said, through any two points, there is exactly one line. We're saying the same thing holds true for planes, but if you can draw any three points that are not in a straight line, that that's going to encompass one whole plane. Um, and it's a little bit tougher to show you this one on a, on a um, flat surface. Uh, this is one that we'll do more precisely in class. But if I pick three points like that, you can be sure that I'm going to be able to cover those with some kind of a, a kind of a piece of paper. And even if we angled them somehow out of the screen, I could just turn the paper, the orientation of the paper, so that I catch all three of those points. And so again, this is kind of like a building block. It's not something that we need to prove, um, but it is something that is true. So we're going to end right there. Those are our four, first four postulates, some of the basic building blocks that we're going to use as we start uh, learning more about geometry.